Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hello, hello. Oh, my goodness. My goodness, my goodness. Ah, we are here. We are here. Uh, welcome to Let's Have a Fifi. This is episode three, no, episode four of season 11 of Let's Have a Fifi. 10 years of your Wednesday night conversation. Welcome, welcome. Um, and if you did not notice, uh, I'm here by myself at the moment. Um, but we have some folks joining us tonight. Um, let's see, let's see. I think the one of my guests is still setting up, and um, but Dina. Nina will join us toward the end of the show. And right now, I believe that Mitchie is getting ready. Getting ready. But while we while we figure things out, while we figure things out, um, we want to thank our Patreon supporters for um, supporting us on Patreon. And you too could support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash let's have a fee uh, we'd like to thank our Patreon supporters like Brandon, D, Drake Jensen, Casey Starr, Carrie and Corey, Kim, Joan, Leanne, Nicole, and Shannon. A special thanks to Drake Jensen for taking a deeper plunge on Patreon. Um, and last week, I think we recorded our first like behind the scenes after the show Um Freddie named it the Afterglow. Um, so um, there's video and there's audio of what, you know, our discussion after the show. So if you don't know, you won't know unless you're on Patreon. And we won't be posting it anywhere else. So, um, yeah, that's definitely something to look forward to. Um, hold on just a second. We'd like to thank our sponsors. Uh, Success Boutique, LC Designs, and Wigs of a Kind for supporting us. And you can support us, too, by going to paypal.me slash let's have a fee um, I was at a fundraiser earlier today, and somebody said, just give me your money. It doesn't matter what I need it for. Just give me your money. So I'm saying the same thing. Give me your money. Did it work? No? Okay. Um, you can also get text alerts for the show by texting LHAF to 602-730-7379. Yes, and I haven't been doing it that much lately, so um, I need to get back on that that train. And if you're on Facebook, um, go ahead and click the stars, and I believe we get some kind of proceeds out off of that. Um, thank you to those that have in the last two weeks or so. Um, we have had like four or five, almost 800 stars uh, donated to us. And Facebook makes it easy. They get a cut though. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to I'm going to bring in one of the guests. Is that okay? Is that okay? Oh, you're so small over there. Wait. Oh, there we have it. Can we hear you? Can we hear you? Hello. Hi. Hey. Uh, so this is your first time on Let's Have a Fifi. Introduce yourself to the folks. My name is Mickey Mirage, and thank you for having me here tonight, Fifi. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know why my phone's ringing. Um, but, um, so, uh, usually our guests are very involved in our show. We don't like the, the that people sit back and, and wait for us. So, if I talk okay. about anything, you just go ahead and get involved. Okay. Um, but, first of all, how was your weekend? How are you? I had a relaxing weekend really and yeah i work through the week so oh so did you, you took off today to be on our show no i i uh 
Uh, I got off a little early today, though. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I'm uh, we appreciate you. Um, so this weekend I um did a whole bunch of stuff, but um I also did my first makeup client that wasn't like a drag person so um i was very nervous i was uh scared out of my mind um and luckily she came very prepared on what she wanted so um i did hades uh from hercules uh and my husband likes to hercules 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 (laughs) um but uh that was uh, quite a bit of an undertaking. Oh, what are you drinking? Um, I'm having. What is it? A margarita. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. With mm-hmm. some uh, some Don Julio. Oh wow, wow! I don't drink. I'm just kidding. That's a no. lie. That's a lie. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> a lie. Um, okay, okay. That's, I would be Uh, drinking, but I gotta get up early. I gotta get up early. I can't, I can't mess around with that. Um, so, um, did you vote yesterday? No, no, I didn't vote. What? Oh my gosh. No. I have to kick you off now. I have to kick you off. I know, I just moved and I. I don't think my uh, voting is in my new address. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You better get that fixed right away. I know. Um, I know. It's my bad. Mm-mm. Anyhow, but um, so we'll talk about the election anyway. So um, in Arizona, uh, we made the news again. Uh, because some polling places were a, a little bit uh, malfunctioning, I guess. I don't know. But um, some of the poll um, things weren't working. So um, some people were very livid, uh, including those people that um, sued to see if the polls would stay open, which a judge was like, no, we're just going to go ahead and... Um, Go ahead and... No, we're not going to do that. Um, Good news is that Blake Masters um, looks like he's not winning. Uh, We have Mark Kelly. Um, It looks like... um, It looks like Scary Carrie is not in the lead and Katie Hobbs is... Which, if Scary Carey becomes the governor, I'll be... uh, You'll have to move again. Because it might get a little (laughs) terrifying here. It might get a little terrifying. What are your thoughts if the governor is Carey Lake? Yeah, I'll probably move. You probably just be like, that's okay. Thank you so much for what you've done. I'm going to go yeah. now. I mean, it's a good thing she's not in the lead for it. I mean, it's pretty close. She's at 49.7% and Katie Hobbs is at 50.3%. So unless, and they're, uh, this is 70% reporting. So there's another 30% of people out there that could tip this over. I can't believe that it's that close. Where those, but, those people are. Yeah, we need to find those people. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Um, it's bad enough that people were being haunted at um, drop-off boxes. Um, also, I was a little disappointed in the Texas race for governor. Um, Abbott is supposedly the projected winner. I, I did not like that. Um Another state that I was kind of disappointed and was rooting for was um, Stacey Abrams in Georgia. Um, Wow. Uh, Beto and 
Stacey Abrams, Beto from Texas, and Stacey Abrams from uh, Georgia really um, went all out. It seemed like they never slept, and for the most part, uh, they were at concerts, they were at rallies, they were they were everywhere. They were at their neighborhood fast food places. They let everybody have it. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. Um, I don't believe that Herschel Walker won in gov in uh in government. Whoa, in Georgia. But um, if he did, uh, we'll have to watch out for that and see what it's like. Oh no, no, I I remember reading this. Um, so um, they'll have to do something in December where they go for a vote because they were like less than a certain percentage away from each other. So. Um, it's kind of like a tiebreaker. That's what I want to call it. Um, are there any issues that uh, politically, I know that some people are not politically charged, but are there things that politically you keep your eye out for? Um, I mean, for sure, uh, I, I mean, it doesn't affect Back to me, but I still think is that Arizona is like banning abortions. You know what I mean? Uh, it has the right to, to do what they want to their body. You know. Hmm. Hmm. Well, um, there's we're not the only state I learned yesterday that um, had abortion on the ballot. Um, a lot of states are trying to. Uh, push that ban and you know um and it's i'm not gonna go too much into that but um we're not going back to the 1800s that's all i'll say we're not going back to the 1800s because right. very slope and i feel like if you let them have that then then what's next to be mm-hmm. honest which is important why you should vote <clears throat> I didn't mean to raise my I didn't <laughs> raise my boys. I did it with intention. Um but um I I think those were like the biggest issues. Uh, some of the issues that were uh kind of important to me were um some of the ballot measures which um prop one twenty eight um, allows state makers to amend voter approved ballot initiatives, which means they can like make changes to something you have already voted on. Uh, it looks like it's projected to be a no. <laughs> uh, these things are real. It, it's kind of weird and scary all at the same time. Um, Prop 129 limits the subjects uh, of ballot initiatives. Um, which a lot of people said yes. And Prop 130 uh, revises the rules of state property tax. I don't pay property tax, but I'm sure my landlord does. Um, yeah. There was one on here about... Uh, uh, this one's really important. Uh, Prop 308, uh, Arizona Prop 308, allows financial aid for college students, regardless of immigration status. That looks like it's uh, at 50.8 yes, with 70% reporting. Hopefully that stays pretty good. And Prop 309, which was the one that like kind of was like, do we do this? Um, and I hope it stays no. Um, this revises the election voter rules, voter ID rules, which would make it like mandatory that you have your ID and some other forms of ID with you when you vote. I don't know. That sounds like oppression to me. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It's bad enough that we can barely make it to the polls. But then we require more paperwork, like you're trying to rent an apartment. I always do mail in. Mm-hmm. So. Um, this year, uh, so I always do mail in too. I'm on the like permanent list. Don't 
ever take me off the list. But usually I mail my mine in. Uh, but this year I uh, I was kind of late. I was kind of late. And so um, I dropped mine off. But it seemed like people were very calm. Uh, and But the line was very long. But when you have your little early ballot, you just stream to the front and just put it in. Really? Done. Okay. See, you could have done your early ballot and just dropped it off. I really could have. So. Mm. Mm. Nobody's judging you. Maybe me. Maybe me. Maybe. Um, it looks like uh, also the one that I was kind of confused about is imposing a sales tax to support fire districts. When I felt like we just did something like that, but that's a subject for another day. Um, but yes, just a, a little election talk. Um, make it worth your while to go t- to the next election, which is like the presidential, I believe. Um, so, um, that's really important. It's really important, especially for us in the LGBTQ plus community. Um, we do not need people getting a little crazy and saying, you know what? Since they're not going to the polls, let's go ahead and put this on there. And then that's what happens. They go, oh, you know what? They're not going. Oh, they can't bring your ID to the to the polling places. So we'll just put something on the ballot. That's what happens. I feel it. I feel it. Um, even though you think you're not being oppressed and people are not leading you astray, they are. Scary thoughts. Anyhow, on to our guest. Are you ready for me? You're there? You look like you're frozen in time. Are you there? <laughs> so, Mitchy, do can I call you Mitch or Mitchy or Just call me Mitch if you want. Yeah. Okay. Uh Mitch, uh, tell folks about yourself. You don't have to give us the whole bio. This is not like A and E. I can't I can't tell your story. Right. But tell <laughs> us about <laughs> Um, how you, where you're from, how we got started, all that, all yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, um, I was born in Cincinnati. I lived in Ohio. I was like 13. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I used, to, I used to like write poetry and stuff. And I feel like, like that translated to when I started writing raps and uh, mm. um, <clears throat> moved to Arizona when I was 13 and uh, um, I moved with you know with my family because I had and uh, um, yeah I started I will say I started like about three years ago but I've uh, I've released three um, like one song a year so I have my mixtape that I'm to get prepped and put out before the end of this year, finally. Oh, oh, you say finally. Yeah, it's been a long time I've been working on it, so I'm excited. Um, how long have you been working on it? Uh, probably some of the songs I've been sitting on for like two years, but I didn't know what I was going to do with them. For the past year, I've been like getting everything together to put on our songs and stuff okay so um start out with poetry what is the process of putting together so a what is the process of putting together a song but then what is the process of putting together an album so i guess they would kind of start the same album you would start with I would start with the concept. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. for a song, uh, uh, <clears throat> my latest song, "Bitch, I'm Sorry." That's the, kind of the concept, but you know that can be used d- different ways. It's kind of like, like um, um, 
had like friends that get, get upset because maybe you're really big on stuff in your your career, your your, your goals, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like I got shit to do, you know what I mean? Or same for like, you know, a relationship doesn't see like why, why you're putting so much time into something, you know. It's kind of like, like a bitch. so that you know, I would start with the concept, and um, mm -hmm. I would then I would probably pick a beat to go, a beat that you feel and, um. You know, I, a lot of people like, you know, the part that is like repeated throughout the song and um, mm -hmm. and then you got your hook because it's like kind of like, you know, the main premise throughout the song. Okay, okay. Um, the, the current single that you have out now, um, how long did that take from beginning to end? So, right? To write, to produce, to that song I had written and recorded. I wanted to re-record it because it was like, like when I was like you know more new to the game, mm -hmm. but it was I really liked it. And um, <clears throat> I partnered up with the the girl Lita Lee, and I like took her. I talked to her about it at the, in his car, and I was like play, played it out my car, and she loved. It. She was like, "Yes, let me get on the oh, that, That's mm -hmm. how that one started. I had, so I had it recorded for, for probably like two years, and then I decided, you know, within the past year, like, what do I, I want to have to get it actually finalized into a song? Okay, so it's not a remix with her on it because no, it's original, I, right? I guess uh, what I had. Like, uh, what do they call it? Was it like a rough draft kind of thing? Rough draft of a track, yeah. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, is this a remix? You didn't say that it's a remix. I just had it re recorded. I had it recorded, it just wasn't uh, uh released in like okay. I, I wanted uh, she's on the chorus, and I, I knew I wanted a girl on the chorus, so I had to... okay, okay. So, um, before we go any further, let's play the video. I think it'll play. We'll it. If it doesn't play, if it doesn't play, just forgive me. Um, <laughs> because I'm known for technical errors. I'm the worst. It's my thing. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, ain't nothing have no one let me look perfect. Yeah, I'm out here in the trap, but I'm always working. How a bitch gonna try to play me? Already played it. Now she trying to say what's up when I'm at the party. Yeah, ain't nothing have no one let me look perfect. Yeah, I'm out here in the trap, but I'm always working. How a bitch gonna try to play me? Already played it. Now she trying to say what's up when I'm at the party. Versace Cuban chain, choose a dick on rearrange you. Only fuck the ones I got rusty, so I change you. Ain't nothing that I can do. Curly hair like Kane too. How a bitch gonna try to play me? No, I fuck the best. Pull up in the demon, watch you see my face look like an angel, nasty, natty baby. When I'm in that pussy, call it banger. Put leader on the track, no, it's finna be a banger. She don't want a nice guy, want a hot boy that's without a danger. That's why I pull up with my click case, I see any pussy haters. She said, act like a dog, I guess it's why they pussy hate. Bitches out here to shit, on the low, they tryna die to slip. with my slime, cause her next one tryna imitate us. Yeah, ain't that had no one like me, look perfect. Yeah, I'm out here in the trap, but I'm always working. How a bitch gonna try to play me, already played it. Now she tryna say what's up when I'm at the party. You ain't never had no one like me, I'm perfect. Thick mix chick who talk back, but I'm worth it. Bitch, I'm sorry, you offended by my looks, Mitchy Mirage and Lita Lee. About to leave, I'm so sure. When I step in a room, I'm commanding the attention. Don't forget to tell them that I'm get there with the shit you mentioned. I didn't come to play, no, all I do is say hoes. If you ain't about my money, get the fuck up out my way, yo. I'ma stay on my grind, queen, gonna shine bright. Trouble down the fight Do we have a problem, baby girl? Cause it's on site 
used to people in my business drinks on lemonade Ho, self-made, I want all the Benjis, all the smoke, yo Fuck the industry, cause they only care about the dough Dang, drink, family by my side at every show, bro Yeah, yeah, yeah you ain't never had no one like me, I'm perfect Big mix chick who talk back, but I'm worth it Bitch, I'm sorry you offended by my looks Mitchie Mirage and Lee to leave, about to leave him so shook uh -huh. Yeah, ain't never had no one like me, look perfect Bitch, I'm sorry Yeah, I'm out here in the trap, but I'm always working Bitch, I'm sorry How a bitch gonna try to play me, already played it Like a target Now she tryna say what's up when I'm at the party bitch, Young and I'm here so make a couple bitches trick on me okay. And my DM asking daddy when you put this dick on me okay. On my birthday off my neck out like I got an injury Like when she want that shit forever into me infinity rap, rap. Make that ass bomb, ba bomb bomb Yeah she do it like Selena Beatty, a bomb bomb Love it when she got a donk, the donk donk Bitch I don't give a fuck if she paid for it Got a cheating on a man cause my baby worth it City boy but it's hot, let me close the curtain Blacked out but the neighbor still here Cursing. Put it on her only fans that get that bitch a burkin' hey, Put it on her name and the day she text me she hurtin' Well I ain't save a number so I don't know that for certain But it was either her or the last one of the ass squirtin' And I'm all up in a girl, some doctor, baby, I'm a surgeon Yeah, ain't never had no one like me look perfect Yeah, I'm out here in the trap, but I'm always workin' How a bitch gon' try to play me, already played it Now she tryna say what's up when I'm at the party Bitch, I'm sorry Bitch, I'm sorry Bitch, I'm sorry. sorry. Like a toy. Bitch, I'm sorry. sorry. She's not sorry. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Automatically turned off. But wait. Um, hold on. What? Wait, wait, wait. What kind of magic is going on here? What kind of magic is going on here? That's this is the magic of God, I guess. <laughs> I was like, Titus, you ain't never had no one like me. Look I was like, yeah, yeah I'm out here in the trap, but I'm always. I don't believe I saw that the first time I watched this. Um, <laughs> I guess I missed out on. Yeah, it's just real quick, just a little something. <laughs> so this is just a little, just a little something, just a little something for the people. <laughs> Um, so how long did that video take? That like six hours to shoot. Six hours I thought to it would shoot take and like three or four. Three or four? Who did I, the video? I was hoping. Uh the videographer is Passe Tapes and uh Nino my manager uh, was directing. Okay, okay. Your manager was directing. So your manager uh, is in charge of, of, of the booty clapback. Yeah, I think it was suggested, maybe. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. like, I'm asking, whoa, I'm asking the important questions. That. I'm asking. Yeah, I've never done You so. said that? <laughs> oh, m make me believe you. Make me believe you. Um, so, along with the video, okay, so now this single is out, right? Um, what happens now? Um, now, now, so that's the single going to interlude into the mixtape, mix which I want to release. I'm thinking before the end of the year. Oh, wow. Is it ready? It's pretty much ready, honestly. I just, just need to uh, um, just just perfect. I, I'm a perfectionist with it, honestly. I'm so, so annoying with it. I mean, I think that's all artists, but um, eventually you have to let go of perfection and let it go. Yeah. Into that's the why world. Your baby yeah. I think that's all of us. Um, so, and is there any um, videos planned for any other uh, songs on the mixtape? Um, only working on a video on a uh, remix out to this uh, Biggie beat, this, this Biggie Smalls beat. Mm hmm. Um, video to, to that, but it's not on that mixtape. 
Oh. So a, a song that's not on the mixtape is going yeah. to be the next maybe, video. Yeah, maybe the next mixtape. Oh. So yeah. things in the works, things in the works. That's lovely. That's lovely. Yeah. Uh, what else besides music uh, are you up to that uh, we would be so interested in that we would catch you everywhere and anywhere to be? Uh are you performing um, I mean, live at all? Yeah, I do perform my music here in the Valley. Um, I'll be at actually. I just got confirmation on that. You got I'll be where? You performing in there. I, I'll be uh, at Stacy's tomorrow. At Inferno oh, okay. Thursdays, yes. I'll be okay. rapping there. Okay. Um, a full set? Um, yeah, or just I'll, the do song. A set. I'll do a whole set for you guys. Okay, okay. Um, and then where, uh, what time at Stacy's? Uh, um, I believe eight. Are you sure? <laughs> there's, other per- <laughs> there's other performers too, so. Uh huh. Uh, were you at Inferno Thursdays a couple months ago when they had a, a whole bunch of rappers from the Valley perform? I think I was there that night, yeah. Okay, but you didn't perform? Yeah, I, I did perform. Oh, okay. Um, they had a Benji. Do you know who he is? Benji and Mark. Uh-huh, he's been on the show. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So, do you collaborate with any of the other rappers in the Phoenix Valley? Um, Yeah, I've collaborated with, I feel like, a a decent amount of of artists. I mean, uh, on Bitch, I'm Sorry is Mm -hmm. uh, local. Um, um, I I have a song with Benji, actually. It's on his, his album. It's like a little bit of a Spanglish little mix for y'all. Mm-hmm. I have a song on? on SoundCloud with Mario, but it, it's a remix and, and stuff like that. Okay. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. Because um, people may not follow you or may not know, who is your inspiration um, when you rap? Um, I would, you know, I mentioned Biggie earlier. I like his beats because I really love Biggie as a rapper. I love Lil Wayne. Obviously, I feel like a lot of people know one of my inspirations. Um, you know, he's not super popular, right? I, I kind of kind of separate people's rap or like their music lives, you know? That's just me. Mm-hmm. I I look up to like Kanye as, as a rapper. Like I feel like, especially back in the day, back in the day he had a lot of good, like good. Music. The little bit more sane Kanye. Right back, yeah, uh, yeah, before universal stuff. Before but I that's Christ. That's just, like even people like Chris Brown, like we don't. Don't condone those decisions. Time I feel like it's kind of wrong to take it out on the music because he's he's not talking about that in the music, promoting that. They're not Mm. like putting that up up on their platform. I don't know. I I think it's like maybe maybe don't go maybe don't go support him on tours and stuff. I feel like it's not so bad to really listen to their music personally. Uh, well, we've had the, uh, this talk um, a couple weeks ago about canceling uh, people out. And um, there are a lot of people that um, can be instantly canceled out. Um, I don't condone anything that Kanye has said in the last 24 to like 36 months. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, um, 
But um, there are other folks that have done things that we talked about um, that like David Bowie and some other folks that we, we continue to uh, love their artistry and them as people. Um, but um, I say, take it, take it as you will. And, um, but right now I'm, not on the Kanye train. I was hinting because I follow you on Instagram and there's a certain someone that I see all the time on your Instagram story. I thought she was an inspiration too. Is it Nicki Minaj? I said her. I mean, you tell me. You tell me. (laughs) I'm not being interviewed. The biggest female inspiration yes i mean you um, know so mickey mirage obviously kind of a play on like Nicki minaj i wasn't gonna tell you to say that but that's what i was going for i was yeah. kind of getting at that i was kind of getting there kind of getting there um but um, I'm excited to hear the mixtape. I'm excited to hear what's next and see a video. You can you can send me videos all the time. <laughs> um, but so you're performing tomorrow. I think that's DJ Image that keeps saying that you're at you're gonna be on at 10:30 tomorrow at Stacy's at Melrose. What is gonna happen after that? What what what's next? Where do we find you? Um, uh, I don't have any shows booked currently, mm-hmm. but um, I'm working on getting some, some stuff going for, for November. And honestly, I'm going to be doing a lot of writing this next month, too. So I'll be doing that. Okay. But you guys can follow me on Instagram. I always post all my shows on there and everything. Um. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, so good to talk to you. Don't leave just yet, cause okay. a, um, uh, we'll recap again. Um, and then, um, I also would love for you to stick around so that um, we could do the afterglow for our Patreon supporters. Um, sure. And that won't take very long, I promise. Um, if you want to stay on and talk with our next guest who rushed all the way back to be on, she was at work and rushed all the way to fulfill her promise. And I can't believe she made it way before the time that she said she was going to be here. She's yeah. probably... she. I dare I say she ran, but uh, oops, my bad. I'm pressing wrong buttons. Please welcome Dina Nina. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. I did run. I sped. I broke a lot of laws on the way over here. <laughs> I may oh. have ran a red light. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, bitch, I got to clock out. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh my God, I can't be here any longer. I got to go. I'm one who normally hangs out after a show and talks to everyone. And I was like, <gasps> bye everyone. <laughs> and just <laughs> ran out. <laughs> They're like, oh my God, what happened? What happened? From the stage to the car. Like that's. <laughs> yes. Uh, Dina. Yeah. Uh, so you haven't been with us for a while. Oh, Girl, it's been a minute. A while. Uh, a well, minute, we've been minute. on for 10 years, so it's been a while. Uh, <laughs> a minute. <laughs> uh, tell us, well, so if there's anybody new, uh, tell them about yourself and, you know, y- you have the floor. Tell us all, right. all about you. I mean, you give me yeah. the floor and we'll talk. Uh, a bit yes, let's talk. go. So I am a stand-up comedian and an actor. And I currently am based in the Midwest. And I run a stand-up comedy school called Lady Last Comedy. We teach 
stand up improv acting for the, on the camera and i've been doing stand up uh professionally for 15 years and um i'm cute okay i also might be a little sweaty today so do not do not well, you judge. ran you I ran did. i was like you ran here i was like i'm going to burn some calories <laughs> 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 I'm oh, gonna burn a one. calorie. Um, and uh, just the one. I yeah, just one. And then I have a podcast called I Love Funny Women, and of course I do live streams occasionally on my YouTube at Dina Nina XO, and that's all my socials. So you can find me all over the place. Oh. And of course, last night, Fifi. What was joined, last night? I don't know. You joined me for something. Oh, you know, the elections, you the know. election. We did election night coverage. Like, I think it was the funnest election night coverage I've ever seen. <laughs> I was a little bit sad because my state and um, California hadn't come up yet. Yeah. And I just mean, as we signed off, we were, like, ready to go. And I was like, oh. Ooh, you guys are oh. tied over there, too. Yeah. All I've the races are tight. Before. <laughs> I did last night. Yeah. Um but um all the races were tight and I could not I can't I still can't believe that Stacey Abrams is Ugh. Tell me about it. I can't believe that Ron Johnson beat out Mandela Barnes too and oh, if you don't man. know my feelings for Mandela Barnes, they run deep. Your man didn't get chosen? He did not. Ron Johnson, that yep. I don't know what to call him. He's our senator again. And oh. Yeah. Did so, Mitch fall over? Did Mitch fall over? Oh, okay. I don't know. Was it... Oh, there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did fall. Thank you. <laughs> Are you okay? Do you oh. need us to call 911? <laughs> I mean, yeah. So I tell my kids this, and I will tell you this. If you fall, I'll make sure you're okay first, and then I'll laugh. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes sometimes the it, are you okay comes out really fast, and then I just start laughing. Sometimes it comes out it. with a laugh. <laughs> yeah, it comes out with the. laugh. Are you okay? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then I'll be like, oh, shoot. Oh, paramedics? No, we don't got that. Sorry. Sorry, so bad. Um, Dina, yes. uh, I'm glad that you ran here. I I totally just like didn't expect this. I was like, uh -huh, she's here now. So. I make a commitment, and I want to fulfill that commitment as close to time as possible. <laughs> A bitch got a um, work ethic and cares about the feelings of other people enough to say, I'm going to be on time. Or as amen, to amen. <laughs> Pass that on and spread the word. Um, what have you been up to? So you created the school. You do live streams. You have the podcast. How is that all going? One it's thing going, or the other. It's going it's well. Going. Yeah. I mean, uh, podcasting is always, a, getting attention for anything is always a struggle, you know, but, mm -hmm. but I have had enough of like, life has been hard, like, yeah. and my focus now is I just want to live the rest of my, ha my life as happy happily as I can doing the mm -hmm. things that feed me and make me feel um, complete as a human being. Cause I realized um, over the last few years that it's hard to not mm -hmm. like when we have so much inside of us that we're passionate about and driven about, and we're not able to pursue those things. It, it, really squashes who we are yeah it drains us and after working a job job for nine months to kind of you know compensate for the pandemic hitting my business really hard <laughs> yeah 
I am like, I either am ready to go now. Yeah. Or I'm going to live. I'm going to live. I'm going to be as happy as I can while I'm here. Mm -hmm. And I know that I was put here to make people laugh and to, uh, this sounds so Southern churchy, but love on people. Like, yeah, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here to be uh, caring for each other and loving each other. You guys, we're, we have to do this all together as best as we can. Mm -hmm. And, and that starts with loving us and loving those around us. And yeah, she got, so, see, she gets preachy. Y'all didn't, um, didn't bring on Miss Reverend <laughs> Dina Nina for nothing. <laughs> I'm going to bring you to the Lord. The Lord and Savior, <laughs> Sophia, the mother of all. <laughs> uh, she got, she got me good last night. She, she started preaching. I was like, oh. I was like, Ooh. oh, I thought this was be election night <laughs> services. I didn't know election night services had just taken off. Oh my goodness! Um, yes, we are family. That's right, Laura. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Are you are you touring at all? Are you um, so? Currently, yeah. I'm not. I'm kind of getting back in the swing of everything after taking a short break just because for my mental health and stability. And I, but I'm in the process of working on a tour of Texas. And oh. it is uh, one of the things that over the last few years that I've seen and heard from my friends in Texas is that trans people are being targeted and doxxed and uh, run out of their schools and their homes and uh, s people have been moving out just to protect their family. And as someone who grew up in a small town in Texas and my parents thought about moving out of the small town that they grew up in mm -hmm. um, to protect and care for me, um, they didn't, but... <laughs> <laughs> But like, they thought about it. They thought about it. You know it. what I mean? Like, there's the, there's always that. Like, we all know that as far as trans and non-binary and queer people, we mm -hmm. we need to be loved and understood within our family units, or or else there's no hope for us. So, part of my goal is to go to Texas because I was like, these people are suffering. I can at least go and be funny. You know? I mean, yeah. So my plan is to do a trans tour of Texas where I. Would it uh, just be you or would it be other uh, folks? I will you? have probably have supporting comics that are uh, part of the GLBT community throughout the, the process just to lighten the load a little bit. But um, and part of what that will look like is, you know, bringing in progressive politicians to talk about ways that we can. Um push back on the systems that are oppressing mm -hmm. us and and what are ways we can help each other within the community to really be there and support these kids who all they want is to live you know they just want to exist so i'm gonna start with texas because that's where i'm from originally mm -hmm. and i will keep being me until the day i die yes laura says keep being you um any chance that you could spread the love to other states? Like Absolutely. Y'all want to call me up and say, hey, Dina, we want to bring you to my state. I will come to your state. I will come yes. there and be funny and we will talk about the issues and we will be will be positive light for people. Like, I mean, come on. This Karen culture is I'm done. I'm done with white people being assholes. I'm done with anybody being assholes. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Step Absolutely. it up and be nice. Same. Love people. Be cool. <laughs> uh, be you're, cool. You're, you're taking the word of Dina Nina and sipping on a margarita is lovely. Yeah, and, love. and fitting to the mantra of our show. Um, I, I mean... I don't drink, but 
I heard that's a nice yeah. time. If yeah. I did, <laughs> it would be trash right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hold myself pretty well, I think. <clears throat> I did until I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I love that you're going to get up and travel. Um, I love that you're still, you're, you, you're getting back into things. What I wanted to ask is how did the pandemic affect comics in general? Because I, I know that like artists started going into their mm-hmm. homes and filling like this. Yeah, um, yeah. cause you said it was like like you're like I gotta live now because yeah. this is but what was that like when you had to like shut the door basically mm. well I luckily shut the door with some people that I consider family so mm-hmm. we were kind of together through a lot of it which really helped I I mean coming from so we were supposed to have um, the Lady Laughs Comedy Festival Uh, in April of 2020 and Mm -hmm. we were all geared up for that, you know, working really hard towards that. And then all of a sudden I have no festival, which was you used to be the bulk of my income for the year, you know, for my business. So there's no festival. There are no live shows. Nobody's calling me. Um, So I was like, okay, what can I do right now? And I started hosting um, kind of mental health check-in days once a week with the comics and anybody that wanted to join, really. Mm -hmm. So we spent like a happy hour kind of mental health check-in. How's everybody doing? Like, you're at home alone. This sucks. What are you doing? What's going on? And then I was kind of everybody was like, let's do this virtual thing. And I was like, I don't know. I need to make sure that it's, it holds up to my standards as a producer. So we, um, we found a solution and started doing virtual comedy for a while. And that was great. We did the festival actually virtually, um, Mm -hmm. still not what it should have been, but it was definitely, it happened. And we I've definitely just, talked about perfectionism earlier. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty good at about not being a perfectionist, but I do have standards that I like to present, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So like if something little goes wrong, I'm not I'm not all hung up about it, but I'm definitely definitely wanted it to look and feel right for everyone involved. So the comics had support and the audiences were able to see mm-hmm. the show. So, yeah, I mean, and then I just kept plugging away and then had a mental breakdown. I mean. But who didn't? I was about to say, who didn't? Um, We were all tied up in our homes. Um, Not a good way. I mean, yeah. Well, I might have been. I just didn't. I didn't (laughs) explain it fully. I tied Um, my vibrator up and called it a night. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like okay bob we're gonna strap you to the bed are you ready <laughs> you like that and all he said to me was and i was like good <laughs> oh yes <laughs> which is the my laugh we life. need <laughs> right the laugh we need um so look for you on tour. You may come to Arizona if we beg you hard enough. I mean, and you then, twist my arm uh, and get me get me paid. I'm going. Uh, <laughs> I'll be there. I'll have to see. I I don't know. I don't. I don't know anybody. I don't. I don't know. You, I know. You're just like nobody. I in just. The... I just. I'm a nobody here, and I just You're sit just here. A and, nobody. I nobody sit here in my. Know. In my little office and just dress up in women's clothing and yeah. You're not a woman. So, what? <laughs> uh are you one I of those no groomers idea. who read to children? Uh absolutely. Yes. Um <laughs> 
Uh, we we had quite the discussion yesterday, y'all, mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. drag queens reading to children and teaching them how to read. So, uh, mm-hmm. and they like to watch this show. Just so y'all yeah. know, the kids uh, do. The n- no. Okay, uh, thank the gods. <laughs> no, I was like, uh, oh. I do have a little bit of a fan club uh, from the White Nationalist Party. Really? So, yeah they they follow me on Instagram. They have they, do. they yes. have they have thoroughly increased my engagement rate. Um, um, and that looks really good when I'm trying to present to brands that I should be an influencer because I want you guys to watch me get ready. Yeah, and I can get paid. Thank you. <laughs> get ready get ready with me, white nationalist. <laughs> I should truly uh do a video that is like, oh my god, they're watching me. Paint yourself white. <laughs> oh no, I couldn't. That was the early days of drag. Please You're like <laughs> You're like if you, ever, if you ever call me ugly. I will show you that I was ugly at one point um, because I thought I was cute. So my very first pageant, I, so I'm partially colorblind. So I bought a, I bought an olive base. So I (laughs) was green. I was green in a pageant (laughs) and a green bitch won the pageant. Oh, no way. I mean, I looked really good, even though I was green, and I still slayed it. Oh, my gosh. I had no idea what I was doing. I thought (laughs) I was the queen of the world, and I put on, like, five shades lighter than my face. And that's all I'll say. The pictures are still on Facebook. And and... look at now. Uh, my turning point was when the newspaper came and they put it on like one of the front pages and I was like, who is that? Oh, oof. Mm. yeah, she's not doing that no more. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I will go to some tutorials on the YouTube. Oh, well, we didn't have the YouTube and people of color don't have that many tutorials. They do now. That's fair. Uh, but I was yeah. basically putting on makeup in the dark. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. I looked. I did some things in the day. So. Oh, that is it. true. Mm. I did have a billboard. Yeah. I did have a billboard, which was I'm about so safe crazy. drinking. Don't black out when you drink. I'm looking at you, Mitch. Drink at home. Yeah. After this. I mean, blacking out at home is okay. Just remember how you got there. (laughs) And who you slept with. (laughs) I mean. I don't remember 90% of the people I slept (laughs) with. So, I mean, (laughs) look at me preaching about. (laughs) Or the awkwardness of somebody is like, hey. And you're like. Hmm. Mm. How did this happen? <laughs> you don't remember me? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> so sorry. Oh, yeah. So sorry. sorry. I was in you last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was very butch of you. Wow. Whoa. Um I do impressions of just <laughs> hat guys. I also do this hat guys. <laughs> um so if you want to get into Dina Dina's DMs there there's that there's that and Mitch is very quiet but he likes it in his DMs too. That sounds very derogatory. I mean, he likes it in his DMs. Wow. Who doesn't? I think it was derogatory. <laughs> You're Don't like I fall feel- out I feel personally attacked right now. Um, I don't know your business. Uh, Don't fall (laughs) out drunk at home. Sorry, Alexa. Laura. Echo, shut up. What did did we tell tell Alexa to do? I 
uh, said something that sounded like her name, and she was like, oh, yep. They're shining oh. at me. <laughs> <laughs> they are Alexa took over. She's always listening. She is. Tell her to subscribe to the Let's Have a Fifi podcast. Yes, please. She's already listening. Watch, you're going to sign on, and then you're going to be like, oh. Oh. <laughs> I used to yell at my Alexa on our podcast to, you know, subscribe. Mm-hmm. And people were like, stop doing that. Every time I play it, it pops on. <laughs> That's <laughs> wonderful. It's great. It's lovely. I hope to set disruption all over the place. Okay. So uh, we know that we can find Dina all over the place and we're going to bribe her to come to Arizona. She's going to yes. do a tour around Texas. Um, maybe you should do the border towns too, because Beto was leading in the border towns. Let's do um, it. I'll call Beto. Um, oh, my friend did and Alexa got pissed. Oh, <laughs> Alexa got pissed because I said, let's subscribe to let's have a Fifi. I mean, she gets, she gets uh, saucy sometimes that'll, that oh, lady. that old bitch. Oh my god. Bitch. She's a nosy bitch. She listens to everything. <laughs> oh, I yell at her all the time. And funny thing is, <clears throat> on these devices, you can hear yourself. You can go back and find the recordings of these. And sometimes I'm a little... You can hear <clears throat> me. I should do that. I should... Just play it all on one of your podcasts. <laughs> Just be like, this is everything I said to Alexa. This is me trying to order laundry soap three times in a row. Three times in a row. And Alexa See, saying it's not available. I'm very, very sweet to my my um, smart devices. And this is why. Because when the AI uprising comes up, I tell them to remember that I was kind to you. <laughs> Well, I, guess I don't want to. I don't want to be strangled in the night by a Roomba without, you know, like. <laughs> well, I guess I'm out. I'm out. I yell at Siri all the time. You're uh, the first target of the AI after the uprising. Yeah. Because <laughs> Siri always gives me the wrong answer, mm-hmm. and then I say, "Fine, I'm going to Google," and then it says, "Like that's not nice" or something. It says, and I'm like, oh, "Well, have the right answers," <laughs> and she's like. Ask the right questions. <laughs> and you're like, you just got a little sassy, Alexa. Uh-uh. Can we yes. um, mm-hmm. rework? Mm-hmm. AI is scary. Anyhow, uh, so any other upcoming gigs, Dina? Well, I'm doing a monthly show in Chicago called Extra AF Comedy Chicago. And that starts November the 25th. And so it'll be the last Friday of the month in Chicago at the IO Theater reopening. I'm also teaching there as well as teaching for Lady Laughs Comedy. And go to dinanina.com to find out all of the things that are happening. I didn't create a caption for that one. I just... That's fine. One. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Dina Nina. You can go to Dina Nina XO and my links page has everything that you can follow me at. Uh, yes. Get it. Get it. All right. And then, Mitch, recap on where you're going to be next. At my apartment. Supposed to be wrapping. Oh. Faces. Tomorrow before 1030. You want people to arrive before 1030. You don't want them to show up during your set. We want people to get there. What'd you say? You cut out a little bit. 10. 10 o'clock. You look a little faded. I'm going to let you go. Uh, <laughs> um, of course, I have to... Mm-hmm. I did not skip to the part where I'm supposed to be. Please hold. Uh, Freddie's in Houston this week, and we'll be back next week. Um, I will be at um, the Glisten... Sparkle Glisten... It has, it's a Glisten... Arizona fundraiser and award show. I'll be there with Drag Story Hour, uh, Arizona, and that starts at 6 p.m. tomorrow. 
Um, I will be at Stacy's on Sunday um, at 8 p.m. for Magic, hosted by Mia Inez Adams. And then on the 18th, uh, we will be at Gracie's Tax Bar for Just the Tip Sex Trivia Night. And you don't know everything about sex, so you should come and learn. Huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah? Good. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Um, it sounded good in my head. I need to work on the delivery. Maybe I need one of your classes. Is it virtual? I will have a virtual class coming up. <laughs> <laughs> LadyLaughsComedy.com. Lady, one lady, multiple laughs, just like we like our orgasms. Oh. Comedy.com. Oh. Oh, my God. Whoa. Well, I was not expecting this. I mean, I'm always bringing it. Um, <laughs> upcoming guest, uh, we have Sir Eric, Mr. Phoenix uh, Leather uh, 2020. He's going to be here. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of things. Lots of things. Bring your notebook. Mm-hmm. Bring your notebook. We're going to take notes. Yeah, especially as many questions as we get about leather. Um, And then uh, as part of the Austin Drag Festival, International Drag Festival, uh, we have Jack Rabbit coming on on the 23rd. And then on the 30th, we have Dylan B. Dickerson White. He's Mr. Trans USA 2022. Do you know Mr. Trans USA? You're going to get to know him on the 30th. Um, and then on December 7th, we have author Lee Call, um, children's book author. So we have a lot coming up, a lot of things um, coming up. And you can catch us, all three of us, everywhere. Yes, everywhere. 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 Swat a fly, yeah. you might catch us. Um, and we want to thank you for tuning in for tonight's Wednesday night conversation. It's your Wednesday night conversation. Um, if you're on Patreon, um, if my two guests will stick around, we'll do a little uh, afterglow uh, discussion about whatever. And then um, you'll catch that on Patreon in the next day or so. Or if I am if I forget, then Freddie will do it when he comes back because I don't know. Um, but thank you for watching live and those that watch on the replay and those that listen on the podcast. Um, we just went over like 6,000 because before we weren't really doing the podcast, to be honest, we were just kind of putting the episodes up when I remembered. But now I've just been doing it automatically after I get done with all this. So it's work, but it's worth it. And uh, we will see you next week for your Wednesday night conversation. Um, who we have Sir Eric on next week. So, good night.